I want to thank Janet Renwick and Jane Hunter for this opportunity to share some thoughts about science with you today. Science has been a vital part of my life as an engineer and in business. Peer-reviewed science has been an integral part of my sustainability and business classes for over a decade. We are at a crossroads for science and society. Relentless technical momentum is developing behind a renewable energy revolution. Incumbent energy suppliers and systems are threatened as never before since horse buggies gave way to automobiles. In class, I show students pictures of Fifth Avenue in New York City on Easter in 1900 and in 1913. In 1900, you can see exactly one car. The avenue is full of buggies, carriages, and pedestrians. Lots of pedestrians and single lanes of horse-drawn vehicles headed in each direction. In 1913, you can't see any horses. There are four lanes of automobiles and fewer pedestrians crammed onto narrow, crowded sidewalks. In 13 years, society adopted the innovation of gas-powered cars and left behind horses and their manure and the diseases of such unsanitary conditions. No longer was there a need for livery, stables, and hitching posts, buggy whips, and carriage makers. A whole industry crumbled in 13 years. A new industry stood in its place. Soon airplanes would fly overhead, products of the aeronautics of the Wright brothers. Electric generators belched forth happily as they served Thomas Edison's devices. Motorized agriculture produced more food more cheaply. Science provided innovation. Innovation replaced a dirty industry with a cleaner one. But was it clean? In the latest American Lung Association publication of data collected for Arkansas, Fayetteville got an F for ozone levels. There were 16 days of unhealthy ozone levels and one red alert day. Back when data were collected for Fort Smith, we also failed here. Ozone is an EPA criteria pollutant and a co-pollutant with CO2. We are dying of the self-destructive pollution of our own nest, and we are taking untold thousands of animals and plant species with us via extinction. The World Health Organization estimates that there are 7 million excess deaths from air pollution per year, with 200,000 of those in the US. As Jay Leno said, we Angelinos don't trust air we can't see. Worse, there has been and continues to be overwhelming scientific evidence linking our emissions with climate chaos. Remember that phrase. The evidence is overwhelming in quantity, quality, and the sheer ratio of peer-reviewed articles. These articles document polar heating and melting over recent decades relative to previous centuries. As recently as 1942, explorers died trying to cross through the Northwest Passage by boat. When Henry Larson's group succeeded for the Canadian Navy, minus one fatality after a journey of over two years. No longer. Now sailboat yacht races are scheduled for this fall to sail around the Arctic Ocean, thanks to climate chaos. Last year, you could have taken the Northwest Passage on a luxury cruise aboard Crystal Serenity, thanks to climate chaos. The U.S. Navy sees a sixth ocean to patrol, thanks to climate chaos. But that's not all. There is documented coral bleaching due to ocean acidification, most glaringly in the Great Barrier Reef, endangering much of Asia's seafood nurseries, thanks to climate chaos. The insurance industry documents climate chaos via Munich Re, a reinsurance company for climate disasters. Executives of Munich Re state unambiguously that climate-related disasters have increased faster than geophysical disaster events, and that the only plausible explanation is human-caused climate chaos. The desertification in, in the Sahara is a human-caused disaster related to climate chaos. Thomas Friedman has documented links between the Syrian war and refugee crisis and the Sudan war and Saharan refugee crisis and droughts induced by climate chaos. 
and we in the richest nation are not immune. Droughts from Texas to California and floods from Vermont to Oklahoma and Texas are indelibly linked to climate chaos. In Springdale, we have neighbors from the Marshall Islands who fled their homeland as it gets drowned by rising tides due to the heating oceans and melting glaciers of climate chaos. But there is a better way, and the better way is cheaper, healthier, and creates more local jobs. It also creates more jobs worldwide because burning what we dig up makes no sense when you can plug into sun, wind, and earth. This opportunity can avoid contributing to climate chaos. The new opportunity starts with electrify everything. This morning, we unplugged our five-year-old electric car supported by a rooftop solar system and drove down the hill from Fayetteville. Electrify everything. Now is the best time ever to put solar on your roof. Electrify everything. Now is the best time ever to drive an electric vehicle emissions free. Electrify everything. It is also the cheapest it has ever been to do both. But there are few places to publicly charge in Fayetteville and none in Fort Smith. Electrify everything. The Arkansas State Legislature just approved a law enabling paid third party charging. Electrify everything. Now Tesla is building our state's first supercharger in Little Rock. Electrify everything. In 20 to 30 minutes at a supercharger, Tesla owners are able to add 170 miles range. Electrify everything. Chevy started selling the 235 mile range Bolt last November. Electrify everything. Many more long range electric options will be available within two years. Electrify everything. Public transportation has been available, but is poorly supported. Electrify that too. Electrify everything. With solar panels on your roof or down the block, you can participate in emission free electricity. And now you can drive cheaper by driving the electric. Each electric mile costs one quarter of a gasoline mile. In both cases, the investment is up front, but the benefits are long lasting. All solar panels sold today have a 25 year performance guarantee. Panels sold over 30 years ago still function as intended. So some minerals can be used beneficially for decades and recycled, while other minerals get burned up in an instant causing terrible health and planetary effects and death. What a waste to burn a valuable commodity into pollutants when it's not necessary. Those terrible health and planetary effects get imposed on non-participants in the sale of the burned mineral commodity. Those are externalized costs, which makes more sense economically, morally. Margaret and I want to institute a clean energy institute on Mount Sequoia with the participation of the Omni Center in Fayetteville. It would feature all of the latest ideas on how to reduce carbon emissions in our society and globally. Who wants to join us? Our house is open to your participation. The core ideas that we share are to electrify everything to avoid climate chaos. Thank you.